Welcome to a follow-up video. I've already made the, f the major filming of it and I'm about to start editing but this is by, by way of a, a postscript before the event so to speak about some things I've left off and what's going on basically. You'll see from the video that I've replaced the switch mode power supply which was getting somewhat overheated. Now, I don't think it's getting overheated because it's getting hot. <laughs> Start again. I don't think it's getting overheated because of too much current. I think it's purely not enough ventilation and the heat sinks on here are simply too small. And the other issue is with these kind of heat sinks the heat sinks should be mounted this way up so the heat comes off it. Whereas here, the part that's hot here goes up and heats this part even further. They're just basically the wrong geometry. And going back to the heat sink that the original L15s came on, a similar comment I can make on that because they're mounted like this with the transistors here and one part of the fins heats the next part really they should be mounted like this but and then putting the transistors on here which would make more sense or alternatively I would suggest that this is just actually the wrong kind of heat sink because that's the way this heat sink should really be mounted and but of course then the PCB will be sticking out here with no real way of mounting it so and of course completely inadequate for the job can you imagine running that amplifier into four ohms on that I mean, literally, you could put bread in there and make toast. Uh, it's just ridiculous. I haven't really talked about the MOSFETs a lot, but I've got some upcoming projects which I hope will interest you. But one thing about MOSFETs is they tend to run at a higher quiescent current. If you go right back to the 80s when Hitachi first brought out the very famous 100 watt amplifier that Maplin copied and they made thousands of those and very good little amplifier it was too but they they typically run at a much higher quiescent current um, than a standard transistor amplifier would because with a with a transistor amplifier if you're operating in class a b Providing you can get rid of crossover distortion, adding more bias doesn't, doesn't give you anything. It, it just means it's staying in class A longer and getting hot for no apparent reason. This is why I've never understood class A, why you'd want to be consuming amps and amps when it's not going to perform any better than a class AB amplifier. But we won't go there, that's another whole ball game. Isn't Yet it? again, it's all change on the L15 FET amplifier. If you watch the last episode, you'll notice that here used to be a switch mode power supply. And I did comment that it does run very hot. This is the switch mode power supply board that I was using. The issues are basically several things. The cabinet that I was using them in was really too small. So what I've done basically, I've replaced the switch mode power supply with a standard transformer and a rectifier with shocky diodes. And this power supply board is one that I've used before. Now, the bird's nest on the top here is because this transformer has also several other windings which I'm not using at the moment but obviously I don't want to cut the wires off because on the next project I may well need those windings and this wire 
is just simply connected to the chassis and it's one that I've been connecting my test leads to as a temporary measure. What I'm going to do is see what power output we're getting with this. I shan't do any other tests with it because the amplifiers themselves hasn't changed. But I've been listening to it over the last couple of days. It does sound very good, I have to say. What we'll do is stick it on the bench and see what sort of numbers we get. Right, I'm going to show you what I've got set up on the bench here because one of my viewers complained that I didn't show before what I'm doing. So this is a temporary load box and it is connected at 8 ohms. I have the signal generator set up to generate 1 kilohertz sine wave and that's feeding in to the left channel via this couple of crop clips. I should be using the AC millivoltmeter to display voltage output and that's connected literally across the load. I should be using the oscilloscope which is connected to the load via this times 10 lead simply to lower the voltage because the scope doesn't like more than 30 volts going into it. We'll only be using the scope to observe the waveform for clipping. I shan't be doing any measurements from it. I should be using the AC millivolt meter to actually measure voltage purely because it's easier for you to see rather than try and see the small numbers on the bottom of the scope. Right before we start we'll just have a look at see what the HT is. I'm just putting my test meter across the output and we have well in this case minus 51 on one channel plus 51. Good we've got plenty of volts. Now I'm anticipating the power of this is going to be somewhat lower than the power using the switch mode power supply not for any other reason well the, the two reasons is that was coming out at 60 volts and this is coming out at 50 so clearly there's going to be a reduction in power and the other reduction will be the switch mode power supply the voltage didn't sag when you start drawing current from it whereas this which is an unstabilized supply, the voltage will sag. So let's have a look and see what sort of power we get. Now don't forget we're purely using the oscilloscope for visual clipping. So I'm going to turn the gain up of the amplifier and we'll, you should start to actually hear it from the load box singing. I can certainly hear it. Right, there's clipping, so we take it back very slightly. We're on the 30 volt range, so this is the 3 volt range. And we have got 25, 26 volts. Just the clipping. Yeah, 26 0.2 to be precise. Well, according to my mathematics and my trusty calculator, that's 85.8 watts across an 8 ohm resistive load. We're going to have a look at DC offset and the meter's just flapping about because I've got the probes in my hand, but we will look at the left channel and it's near as damn it 15 millivolts and we look at the other channel if i can get the probes in there 16 millivolts so pretty pretty reasonable i think there's one last thing we'll have a look at and that is the idling current let me set that up for you the meter is set up on the 200 milliamp scale 
and we have 55 milliamps. Now, that could be considered to be a little high, but in my experience, FETs generally run at a higher quiescent current than a conventional transistor amplifier. And there is a preset pot in there. In fact, it's coming out nearer 60 milliamps now. And the pot is in fact sealed. So I'm going to look at the other channel now and see what that's doing. Now this is the other channel and it's clearly a little on the lower side. So I think I'm going to have to do some experiments and see whether it affects crossover. Yeah, they're both the same temperature. So I think at best I will initially set them to the same level of say 50 milliamps after it's been on a while. Now that's total current consumption of the whole amplifier, but 95% of that current is flowing in the output transistor, or the output FETs I should say, because there's no real current consumption in the rest of the circuit. So I think this channel I'll probably leave as that's creeping up to 50 milliamps. One thing about FETs, by the way, you don't have thermal runaway problems because the hotter they get, the um, lower the current is, which is the complete opposite to conventional transistors. Right, this one is running a little high. You can see where I'm using, that's the little potentiometer there. I've taken the seal off it and we will turn it anti-clockwise. It's quite critical for a multi-turn pot. I've only literally just touched it. So we'll leave it on that and see if it settles down a little bit more after a while. That's with no input, by the way, no load. It's just quiescent conditions. I found out that the amplifiers are actually set to 50 milliamps. Now that's total current consumption. Now, very little current is actually consumed in the driver stages because a MOSFET is basically a voltage driven device, whereas a standard transistor amplifier will be is current driven. You need one stage adds a bit of voltage gain, the next stage adds current, phase splitter and so on. And so in the end your drivers are usually on heat sinks because they actually develop a few watts. But FETs aren't like that. They, they are driven. This is a very oversimplification. I, I appreciate this. But a, trend, a, a FET is basically driven with voltage and there's virtually no current consumed from the driver stages. So when you look at the board, there's no heat sinks on any of the transistors other than the output FETs. But, oh, I need to show you one more thing. Just a minute. This is a new power supply board that I've just received and it's going to be used in a future video. But it's basically a transformer in plus and minus DC out. And it's about double the size of the board I'm using, but it won't fit into the current project. Here, the rectifiers, which I believe, I cannot remember whether they're um, shockies or standard diodes, but at least they're on a degree of heat sinking, which the other ones weren't. And the capacitors are huge, um, 12,000 microfarads. But there's a downside to everything. And the problem is there are only 63 volts working. So lots of capacity, 
but when you're running on an HD of 61 volts, I think 63 is a little, well, it's pushing it a bit, isn't it? So I'm not sure where to go from there.